Welcome to Food Talks, hosted by Food Corps. So this week, here at the Farm to Cafeteria Conference, we've got stories. Because we think that stories can sometimes get at the complexity of the impact that we're having in a way that numbers don't always show. I wanted to make sure to thank Subaru for their support of Food Corps, and more specifically, their support of Food Talks tonight. So without further ado, I present to you Food Talks. My name is Hartman Turnbow, and I belong to me. I live in Mississippi, down in Holmes County. I've got bullet holes in my front door. They set my house on fire. But I'm going to vote this spring because freedom's my desire. Hartman Turnbow was who you might call a freedom farmer. In 1963, he lived in a community called Milestone which had a rare concentration of black landowners in the Mississippi Delta, when many people worked as sharecroppers and lived on white-owned plantations. His story tells us of the independence he got from owning and farming his own land, independence that led him to join the first 14, a group of that number who became the first black people to register to vote in Holmes County. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, hey. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This was the favorite song of another freedom farmer from the Delta, Fannie Lou Hamer. For much of her life, she worked as a sharecropper, living and farming on someone else's land for extremely low wages. When she began riding with groups of people to register to vote in her county, she would sing that song, This Little Light of Mine. And after those trips, she was evicted from her home and savagely beaten. But through her resolve to help others, she became known for challenging the 1964 Democratic National Convention as a delegate of the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party. After helping to ensure voting rights, she expanded her focus to issues of poverty and hunger. One of her many projects was called the Freedom Farm Co-op. She worked with sharecroppers to get them onto their own land to farm, to grow vegetables, to get into better housing, and they even had a pig bank where they would breed and share pigs amongst families. She was known to say that as long as she had a pig and a garden, no one could tell her what to do. <laughs> Both Fannie Lou Hamer and Hartman Turnbow lived within 30 minutes of where I serve in Greenwood. These freedom farmers are people who had to fight for the right to grow food, and they are a huge inspiration for my service. And thanks to researchers like Dr. Monica White, Dr. Jessica gordon Emhart, we should definitely look up. These stories are being shared more and more. They point to the stories and the struggles for justice that have occurred in the communities I serve and the vital role of land and farming. Today, the legacies of these freedom farmers live on in groups like MAC, the Mississippi Association of Cooperatives. Two co-ops in MAC happen to be the site organizations of my fellow service members, Jen and Melvin. And in Greenwood, another co-op, the North Delta Produce Growers, have supported me by donating produce, talking to parents about farm to school, and volunteering with an after-school garden club. And just a few weeks ago, I met a longtime veteran member of MAC named Wendell Paris. As a young man in the 60s, he had organized alongside Fannie Lou Hamer herself. And at this meeting, where he taught me that Hartman Turnbow song, he was still promoting cooperatives and local agriculture. 
So I guess we still have some work to do. But these connections and these stories of freedom farmers are what feed my love for Mississippi. They inspire me to think that through cooperation and courage, we can help every child to grow up healthy. So, who are the freedom farmers from your community? Thank you.